the start button on that because I don't have my okay so it is 16 23 25 December 2020 once again it's wait, see that there it's 16 23 25 December 2020 okay <clears throat> and while everyone's being happy and gay and all that with their Christmas and such. I'm here at home alone <laughs> and uh, finally getting a chance to work on some radios, notably this Sanyo M994, which is the non uh, shortwave model. This was sent to me a long time ago and I've been trying to get the parts to it to repair, but I want to take you through like I normally do. Wait, wait with uh, my pictures and such. Now I've got a YouTube video going as well, which I started, right? It's red. Okay, so let me zoom in on this one here. Alright, so that's pretty close. So here, I want to show you. I've never, I had one of these a long time ago and I sold it to somebody in Chicago. I think it was Chicago or maybe New York. I can't remember. I sold it with a 550, which I no longer have. Well, that's redundant. Okay, where is the mouse? Here it is. Okay, so, without further ado, let me get... Okay, so this is the front of the 9994 as it was sent to me, and I made an unboxing video, and it has all the styrofoam stuff all in it, still. But some of it's most... Okay. And then here's the top of it, and it's got all these features, okay? And um, all like that, okay. You've seen that before, I'm sure. That's the end of it here, and that's the AC input as well as DC input. Let's see where here is the other end. This has got uh, your mics, phono, line in, line out, external speaker, beat cancel, and ground for the turntable, should you have one. That's the back, okay. Uh, this one's got both antennas complete with tips. Okay, that's the battery compartment. Got some, who knows. Alright. That's the uh, model number right there. It is a 99, it's not an F model, so it has, anyway, you can see that, right? Okay. That's again, I can't remember if I took these pictures or not. There's the bottom. No one ever takes a picture of the bottom, but there it is. There is the bottom. Okay, here's the top once again because I can't remember. I took a picture of the top, but there's the top again. Here's the back with the screws out. It takes six screws to remove the back. Now, one thing I learned about this model is that it's on a chassis. So it's actually very simple to take apart. I didn't realize this. I thought all signals are difficult. Once again, pop the back off, take a picture. Don't even open the darn thing. Take a picture. It's got two antenna wires right here, yellow and blue. They plug in right about there, okay? And then uh, moving along, take a picture, close up, that's where they go. Here's a uh, flopped open on my lap, okay? There's the main power cable, and this is the, uh, the two power leads as they come from the power supply, the orange and the blue, okay? And then again, another picture, clearer, okay? And then take them off, take a picture, okay? You can never have enough pictures. There's the inside of the back cover. There's a picture of the transformer. There's no fuse, okay? That's a picture of the motor. It's got a belt, but the belt was very loose. Take a picture of the entire back to see how it goes together. Flash. Take a picture of whatever I can there. I don't know. There's a picture again of the uh, that side. And take a picture of the circuit board just because you can. Another picture from a different angle. And there's unplug something. Take a picture of it. Okay. That's how the uh, door handle comes out. All right. That's how the other side comes out. Got it. All right. There is the door handle. So I know how the pieces go, so I can put it back in correctly. All right. It's got both pieces. All right. Great. 
There's a nice flash picture of the tuner board just to show me where anything might be. And this was very important to know that that's the screw right there for the, um, for the chassis. This is another chassis screw, okay? And then, let's see here. And over here, there is another chassis screw at the very top. Take that screw out. Okay, and then there was another chassis screw at the bottom, I think. I can't remember. Yeah, it was right, right here, not quite in the picture, right there. That one, take that out. And then another picture of the whole thing, okay. And then the whole, then the, the chassis comes out, the, it comes off. That's the inside back of the, inside of the, anyway, that's, you know what that is. That's, and here's a picture without a flash and just, well, I, get, I took a picture close up. There it is. So that's what it is. Nominal is 5 watts, max is 5 watts, 2.5 ohm woofer. That's, again, same thing the other side, right? Take a picture of that detail, how the door is sprung and such, right? And the two view meters and how they're wired up and all those wires down there, what they do. And now here's the chassis that I didn't, anyway, there's the chassis. So take a picture. All right, here's the, now this, wait, let me go back. This belt was underneath that lever. That's how I took it apart. I didn't put it there. It was underneath that. Here I'm pointing to the same thing. Okay, so helps have pictures. This unclips. So I wanted to take a picture of how it unclips. It clips its, anyway. What else? There's a picture of the other side of that. They actually go together when you put it back together. Okay. There's a picture of the tape deck. Okay. And then the uh, tape deck wires as they come undone from the little catch there. This is the one screw that holds on that side. And then I took a picture of the other screw to make sure I knew where it went. There it is. The other, those three screws. This one, that one, and the motor screw is the one that holds the whole darn thing in place. That's a fuzzy picture. There it is again. Just a whole other, I'm sorry, I have the screwdriver here on this. There's one more screw. So it's one, two, three, four screws. The fourth screw holds the tape counter in place. You can take, lift the whole thing out. This is how I lifted it out. This is what it looked like. The belts are loose. You can't tell, but they're, this one's very tiny. That one's the correct diameter, I think, but, uh, and then here's just a whole picture of the tape deck, all right? Another picture of the tape deck. So here, I took out the two screws. There's, there's a, a ground right here that goes across to that. There's another ground that goes on here, which, anyway, that's how that works, all right? Then you can take the belt off, the top belt, which runs off of this one here. I don't know what that thing does, all right? Then there's another picture just because, oh my. Um, so here's a picture of, okay, what I'm trying to show here is that right here is a little tiny pulley, okay, there's a little tiny pulley there underneath the flywheel, which then rotates and turns this white pulley, which then also turns this little pulley, which is geared, which this, I believe, turns the take-up reel, okay, and... Yeah, so here's another picture of, again, the that. See how close? It has to be all the way down to the base. This one here turns that, and that turns the other wheel underneath. That belt was not even there. It was not non-existent. It wasn't in the case or anything. And here I'm just, now this is with the flywheel out. That's where the flywheel goes. Capstan flywheel, okay? This is the one gear it goes around. It goes around that, so it goes around, whoops. The belt goes in a triangle shape around these three, if you can see the thing going around. It goes around those three. It wasn't even there. Okay. Here's the, uh, again, here's a picture of the flywheel with the pointed, the capstan rod that goes into that hole and it goes around that. Okay. Then these are the belts I took off. This was the, whatever belt that is, that's whatever belt that was. This was, um, five and a half inch, over, yeah, five and a half inches long. The other one was nearly four inches long. And then uh, this belt here was, 
uh, nearly six inches long, five and three quarter inches long. Here's a belt I tried, it didn't work. Another, anyway. And they're just a bunch of belts I tried. And I do have a small selection of belts. I ended up putting a 4.8 belt on the underneath because that was the closest one I had that would fit. So there it is, SCQ 4.8 belt. Okay. And that goes, like I said, it goes. Okay, so yeah, you can't really see it, but that's the belt. That's okay. And that's what it looks like when it's fully belt. It takes three belts up underneath and one counter belt, which makes four. And that's the end of my pictures. So, without further ado, let me zoom out. Okay. I'll zoom out with that camera there. That's the YouTube camera, and I got the Facebook over here. Alright, so now I've got this queued up, played up. I haven't cleaned the switches here. I, I haven't cleaned anything except for the recording bar switch, which is up underneath here. I've, rec I've cleaned that and I've cleaned some other thing, but I haven't cleaned any of these other switches yet. And I just want to play this for you before it gets too dark and I get not very good. Anyway, so this is play, I think. No, that's fast forward. This is play. short it needs a motor because it plays too slow. Um, I don't know what all these buttons and knobs do just yet. I have to look at the top again and see tape. So this is radio. Wait. Radio. One of these is a power button, right? There we go. Power. buttons and knobs and are. So that's that's that. So if we go back to the tape, right? <clears throat> that's gonna put it on light in. That's tape. There we go. Alright, so that's running it down. So now if I run it all the way back down slow, turn up the volume. Now this will rewind. That's the beginning. So that's full blast. So if you can tell, if you know that song, that's running too slow at max uh, speed from this motor, okay, with new belts and everything installed. So it needs a motor, is basically what I'm trying to say here, all right? <clears throat> and I'll, I'll just cut it short here because I do want to go back through this model here. Let me zoom this thing out again. Wait. Zoom out. Because way back when, or back in May when I got this model, and it's only now that I've had a chance to repair some models finally because I have had... Well, you don't know this, but you know I, I live with my mom and 
My mom is, you know, when she asks something to be done, it gets to be done right then and there, okay? You don't wait, you don't, you know, it got to be done. And two weekends ago, I spent the entire weekend helping her with her computer. I didn't touch a boombox. Had people calling me, you know, fix this, how do you do that? You know, I didn't touch a boombox at all. So now that I've had this happy little holiday weekend, which I had to work the week prior to, or last week, I had to work all the way through, and like that. And so then I've had these this entire week of Christmas week here to work on some radios. But then I had a computer issue of my own where uh, I lost access to this computer. It wasn't hacked. It was the filter keys, which I didn't know about. A nifty little feature built into Windows that if you hold down the... Uh, I don't know if you've ever done this, but if, you're, if you hold down the shift key for more than uh, 15 seconds, it will revert to um, easy access only to your computer and not allow you to use the computer. And I didn't know that by way of the keyboard. So that was just something I learned about this. But I, I had to buy... I thought it was the keyboard going bad. It wasn't. It was the... Anyway, something built into Windows I didn't